I've been going through a lot of the One Piece movies. Some of them are fascinating. A lot of them feel like filler. But I didn't expect us to turn a saga into a movie. Now, I'm not complaining about it. I loved Alabasta, so you're telling me we get more Alabasta? Sure, I'm fine with that. Some of these movies have felt like filler in a bad way, but you know what doesn't feel like filler? The canon story, but in movie form. Kind of. See, at first I thought it was a good idea because, well, it's Alabasta. But after watching it, I realized that the Alabasta movie is like in this weird in-between where I'm trying to figure out what you're even trying to do. The movie cuts out a lot of scenes from this arc in order to be able to fit everything into a movie. And because of that, the structure is very different. I think it would actually be easier to talk about this movie by showcasing what it sets up and what it pays off. I think the Alabasta movie has a really strong start, using the first minute to establish Vivi, Pell, the old man, Koza, and all of their relationship dynamics. We learn that Vivi's a princess who is pretty close to everyone here, she loves Alabasta, and obviously that's important for a lot of what we're gonna set up. But it also gives us a look into Pell, who he is as a person, why he cares about Vivi and the people of Alabasta. Again, another thing that we're going to later pay off. But it gave me hope that we would see more of Vivi's perspective, seeing how she escaped Crocodile, maybe a quick recap of how she met the crew. But instead, after this flashback, we cut directly into the crew finding Bong Clay. Because all of that history is implied. That's probably the most difficult thing about making this movie, from only one arc of an entire saga. So much of Vivi's story, going from acquaintance to ally, is had during their journey to Alabasta. So we don't really know how Vivi got here, or why Vivi's doing what she's doing, you just gotta know all that. And it's kind of why I have trouble reviewing this movie. So we can't really get the payoffs from outside of Alabasta, but we're also removing so much from this arc that we can't really get a lot of payoff of what's in Alabasta either. It is a really tough situation. And we can see more of that when we run into Bon Clay, who has a bit of a moment in the spotlight, making jokes, playing around, before wrapping up Bon Clay's entire character arc right here, in the introduction. Bon Clay says, it's not how long we've been together that makes us friends, and then we don't spend more time with Bon Clay. Later you still get that fight, but Bon Clay doesn't get that dramatic sacrificial comeback that gave that character purpose in the original story. So instead of Bon Clay saying, despite barely knowing each other, we're friends through and through, and then proving that by stalling for the crew. Instead, it just sounds like you're a liar. And this is what I mean when I say that in cutting out so many things, we begin to lose a lot of the payoffs. Anyways, Bon Clay dips in, does their thing, dips out, and the story continues like normal with Vivi filling in the crew about Crocodile, which is when they decide to head over into that desolate village with the old man. The old man's storyline also gets a few reworks. He hands the crew water, which is setting up Luffy's counter to Crocodile, and setting up Luffy's water balloon strategy against Crocodile. The really big change here is that round 2 and round 3 of Crocodile vs Luffy is really different. Crocodile encounters Luffy, dehydrates him, and quickly pulls him into quicksand, but we don't see him come back and do that whole water balloon fight strategy. All of that is just cut out of this movie. And that was a pretty important part of Alabasta. Meaning that the only impact the old man had was in that first encounter, where Luffy uses the water to quickly rehydrate his leg after being attacked by Crocodile for the first time. Because the old man, after this scene, will not be brought up again. I feel like I've been very negative in this review. I've critiqued a lot of choices and how it impacted the narrative, but I really like this movie, because here's the thing. We only get so much screen time, right? We want to have specific iconic moments. We want to enhance some of the fights. It's trying to do some fan service. We're trying to cut out some unimportant stuff. And it sounds tough. That is a big goal that it's trying to do. And I'm surprised by how it managed to handle it relatively fine. Like the fights with Crocodile were strong and they were complete and they felt like we were getting a similar but upscaled and maybe differently choreographed version of that original fight. It is still skipping a lot of the story, but I feel like it's trying to land on a lot of the important beats. The entire clockwork sequence was really tightly written. I think that is like the best part of this movie because it feels like it somehow managed to do everything it needed to do without really feeling like it was rushed or lacking. 
We got to experience Vivi Sorrow for her kingdom, and it felt fleshed out, all while trying to cut out everything that was not integral for the Alabasta arc specifically. For example, Ace. Ace is a very important part of the story, but he's not that important in Alabasta. He has like two scenes. Smoker, a very important character in Alabasta. He's going to have a lot of ripple effects in like the themes of what One Piece is. But I get it. It's a one and done movie. He doesn't need to be a part of this specifically. We cut him out. It is like surgically trying to remove and stitch together different parts of the arc. And the fact that it managed to make it work is itself commendable. I could nitpick some of the moments, but like that's all it would be. Just nitpicking because it was fine. Like when all was said and done and Vivi wanted to thank the Straw Hats and the crew says, nah, go to your kingdom. We'll stay behind. I would have wished that we kept that scene where the crew collapses once Vivi left. I think that is one of the strongest and most beautiful scenes in this arc. But again, it feels like we gotta cut something. It really just felt like we had to pick and choose what scenes we wanted to show and sometimes it's Usopp rooting for Luffy, other times it's fan service. You can't win every battle. Despite everything I said, it's Alabasta. I love Alabasta, and I think that's why it's a good movie. Like, it's not a replacement, but if you want to re-experience just a little bit of that Alabasta feeling again, but you don't really want to go through 50 chapters or 40 episodes, but you still want to feel something, then go for it. That's what this movie is trying to be.